everybody. Welcome to Waffle Talk. Uh, we just watched the first episode of season four. That's episode 91. I'm Sean, and with me today is Shauna. How are you? Oh, good. Awesome. <laughs> good episode. So what did you think of this, this show? Um, I liked it. It was a nice, uh, light one, kind of like easy going into the, the season, but also felt like it took what was left off from partially what was left off on the table from last season, from the season finale and just kind of we dealt with it, especially evil and stuff. So it was nice to see that mm-hmm. happen finally. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, look at okay. Gosh. So anybody in the chat got any questions or comments? Just go ahead, let it out, and I will, I will uh, go ahead and do my best to respond to it or be, you know, all that stuff. All right, so, okay. um, how do we start this? So. <laughs> How did this episode start? Did you? Uh, they're with Omen, and then yep. and then what happened? They um had to procure. Dieth and Paulton had to procure a diamond for the components for the resurrection of um, Evelyn and um, Simon. And so they got that, but they had to trade in the uh, the horn for money because I apparently they don't have that much money. So <laughs> it started off where they were gonna resurrect uh two heroes and they mm-hmm. had a scroll right mm-hmm. but then they went to get the components yeah what was that i think they're i think they're keeping the the scroll as a just in case thing i think they had omen do the um the resurrection omen so omen can cast raise dead that's the deal mm-hmm. I, I i didn't know he was that high level <laughs> I, well he might have had you know him being Lord of Waterdeep and stuff like that, a lord, a mass lord, probably has his perks. <laughs> that's right. Wow, that's right. So Dieth and Paulton went out into the street, and they mm-hmm. needed some diamonds, which are a component for the uh, for the ritual. It's funny, spell components are like most of the time. I don't know. Most people forget about them. Or mm-hmm. Don't do them. Um, Chris seems to only use them just for these big things, I guess. You know. Because some yeah. certain spells require like very valuable components, and it seems like he'll he'll do those, but he doesn't really worry about the smaller ones. Like I think detect thoughts, you have to have a copper piece or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, he doesn't worry about that, I don't think. But the yeah. other ones well, he does. So yeah, twenty k for t- oh okay yeah so what well, okay so he ended up trading the horn of yeah. blasting. Mm-hmm. We were talking about. Some people in the chat were saying it was the Horn of Blasting was worth twenty thousand gold. It's a significant magical item, so. But I looked in the Dungeon Master's Guide and I saw it's a rare item. And rare mm-hmm. items, I believe, I might have, I might be mistaken, but I think it said they sell for between five hundred and five thousand gold. So mm-hmm. I wasn't sure where the twenty thousand came for. Oh, thank you, Lisa. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it was like, so he needed two five hundred gold piece. Yeah. Gems, and he traded a horn that was worth a lot more than. Uh... <laughs> I was wondering how they were going to get that because they don't they're, have any money. <laughs> they're not. They're not the greatest with money, as I can. I can certainly understand because I tend to like treat money. My characters like whatever until it's like we need money. It's like how much money do we have? <laughs> money. It's funny. Money in D and D. A lot of times it seems mm-hmm. like it doesn't. You never use it. You have your gold and you don't use it very much so it's kind of uh it's kind of like <clears throat> you know i guess what's the point but in this group they don't they don't loot very much but they Mm-mm. don't they don't have a lot of usually their fights are kind of this chaotic thing that they have to run yeah from. it's mm-hmm. not like they kill everything and then they sip through the rubble like they they run away you know mm-hmm. <laughs> like when they, saw- when they fought klaus yeah you know, they didn't Kill Klaus. Klaus got chased off, and they mm-hmm. ran the opposite direction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they just tend to take like the most they get usually are scrolls or like Strix grab some components or some uh, some gross pieces or whatnot. But as far as gold, yeah, it's it's actually it's it's been mostly been Paulton. Paulton has all the gold that they that they have. Because remember at the beginning of the season, like they had to go to him for all the money. To like find supplies to go into the jungle. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I'm correct on the price. Powerful horn for 5,000. Well, the thing about the horn of blasting, um, the original Stevicus Prime, the thing about the horn of blasting is that every time you use it, there's like a 20% chance it gets destroyed. Mm -hmm. So um, anybody who knows that is going to factor that in probably because every time you use it could be the last time you use it. So it's it's not like a one use item, but it's something that's you know not going to be around forever. So yeah. I, I would imagine that that would affect the value to a degree. Uh, what is the least optimal roll? As a DM, you can set the price to whatever you want. It just depends on how much gold. That's true. That mm -hmm. is true. Uh, but I mean, Chris is running this. I think. He's trying to run it more or less by the book. So he is kind of, uh, you know, sticking to... Because I think part of the show is uh, for people who don't play to see how the game goes. And, and you know, so he wants to kind of stick by the book like as much as he can, right? I mean, he changes things from the published adventures, but he does run things pretty much the way they're supposed... Like, he doesn't really have a lot of house rules, does he, right? Mm -hmm. I can't think of any that he has. I have time. Yeah. But yeah, they they definitely tried to uh, do the thing of try and negotiate through persuasion <laughs> the the merchant as much as possible. Yeah. So they were staying in uh, one of the merchant prince's mansions, I guess. Yeah, nice place. And oh. let's see here. So they got that stuff. They got the components. Um, uh, so they traded the horn, and then so they did. They tried to raise Evelyn first, mm -hmm. and so Evelyn came back. Yes, Evelyn came back, and she's no longer a construct. She's a living person. Yes, she's awesome. A, she's no longer a construct anymore. Good human being. I like the construct thing, but I'm glad it's over. Yeah, but she um, has no memory of what happened. After she was uh, killed by the, um, what was it? The um, the monster. Mm -hmm. So the all Valhanoth. the stuff in the Valhanoth, yes. So all the stuff in in the in the upper planes never. She's not going to remember that the stuff of her father and all that stuff. That's weird when you mm -hmm. have the player that knows something that the character doesn't know. That's a weird yeah. thing. Yeah, it's, it's hard. Although... I mean, if you... well, go ahead. I mean, if you can play, I mean, if you can, they've done really well about, like, player, you know, player knowledge, character knowledge, and also the fact that they basically played the evil versions as, you know, optimally as they did. So, I mean, I, it, they can they can deal with that, or um, Anna can deal with that, I think. Um, Time Patches says, Strix's careful spell is kind of a house rule. That's mm, true, mm -hmm. right? Because isn't careful spell... Does, like the group automatically makes their saves or something like that. It's they not... make their saves, but it's like, I, yeah, it makes the saves, but I think they take the damage or the half damage. Chris runs it where she casts fireball, and the careful mm -hmm. spell just goes around the heroes, and they take no damage. But I think yeah. in the book, they do still take damage. You know, they just yeah. take less. I think that's how it works. Mm -hmm. uh, time patches. Uh, you've been adding stuff to the Dice Camera Action Wiki, I've noticed. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. She's been adding all these awesome categories and stuff, and uh, people have been cleaning up stuff in the wiki, and it's, like, really awesome, because, you know, I, I forget stuff. There's know? so much information on like, there. Like, on any show, like on this show, like, you know, I have a horrible attention span, so even when I'm writing a recap, like, I miss parts. So towards the beginning of the show... When they were out there uh, getting the diamond, uh, I kind of sort of missed <laughs> like three minutes, even though I'm sitting mm -hmm. here staring at the screen. <laughs> and what that means is over time, it's like I miss stuff from the show, you know, mm -hmm. even though I'm sitting there watching it. And um, so it's nice that other people can help me uh, fill it all in. Yeah. You know what's really cool is in the wiki um, on Diaz's character page he's got the horn of blasting on there mm -hmm. and so as a fan or whatever if you wanted to see the stuff he could trade you could go on the wiki and see at least some i would love to track the gold they have I, I yeah wish, but that would be you'd have to go watch the entire show you'd have to like i think watch it like a hawk to like be able to like find the gold because gold is just kind of like it's it's stated in such like passing and stuff like that it's it's not like a magic item it's just kind of like they say it and it's gone uh <laughs> Uh, Mad 
mad fartigan. <laughs> Although they were making it out that Evelyn didn't know about the Strahd puppet, but she was still alive when that happened, so that confused me. I don't remember that part. Do you remember that? Um, yeah, I think it might it might also been that maybe she thought that they got the Strahd puppet. She, it seems like she didn't know how long it's been since she died and when she was resurrected, so maybe she thought they got the Strahd puppet back, maybe. Mm-hmm. Cheap shot to kill Simon that way. A cheap shot to kill Simon that way through the uh, through the explosion. Well, I I don't I don't know if it was a cheap shot, but the explosion. There's certain times where Chris will. Okay, so we're talking about a few episodes ago, where they were fighting the Balhanoth and Strix cast the fireball, and it was in a little cracked area, maybe like five feet wide but long. So fireball mm-hmm. fills a volume, but I think some DMs don't fill the volume they just let you pick your spot and the fireball only goes that area uh the the container aspect of the area doesn't factor in but chris used that and uh the only thing that was a little weird about that to me was just uh if if you haven't demonstrated that you're going to run it like that before you should maybe tell the group although he he might have i don't remember um but i i don't i don't know if it was I don't know if it was cheap, but uh, I, some it depends on the DM. Chris, Chris is ready. Chris is very willing to let them make their mistakes and then mm-hmm. uh, call them out on it. When sometimes some DMs like me, I will if their character would probably know. Like if if you're about to cast the fireball and and it's gonna splash back on them, I would tell the players. Uh, but I'm like a super nice DM. But in doing that as a DM, kind of helping you might be helping your place too much <laughs> right mm-hmm. because yeah people are going to make mistakes in the game right yeah or he I, or he selectively decides when those rules are enforced for dramatic reasons like ever since Paulton had his um his uh tiny hut it was be like up until like later portion of season three it would be instantaneous like tiny hut tiny hut even right. though it's a one minute charge that's right until it was the um, the egg bombs time, and it's like you have a minute to cast this. Right, right. And some of that might just be Chris didn't remember that at the time. Mm-hmm. Then later on, he did. Yeah. Uh, for me, like as as a DM, I always try to be upfront beforehand to avoid those because you know if, if mm-hmm. the group dies because of a ruling like that and they just mm-hmm. went into it not expecting that that can be a big problem so yeah uh that, but like well, i guess it's like when you're chris perkins <laughs> you, you can do you, know, we, you don't really get the question <laughs> right he's chris perkins you know you don't get the he's, he's like the 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 dm i i i've read where they've called him the best DM in a building full of good DMs, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's like he can kind of he can just do his thing. But yeah, but then again, yeah, you forget from time to time. Even though like it's so much information that even someone that wrote the thing isn't going to remember that 100 percent of the time. So mm-hmm. there's that too. After all that reminiscing, they didn't talk about the bomb. Who is holding on to it again? Oh my God, they still have oh, they still have that thing. Is Diaz holding the bomb? Oh, I guess so, because Evelyn had that, and Evelyn died. God, they still have that thing together. Still seems like he was railroading, says uh, mm. Spivicus. Chris, does Chris, do you think Chris railroads? Um, I think he gives them, most gives them, uh, like, kind of hints of where they're, where they want to go. Like, as far as, like, I think sometimes railroading is necessary because sometimes if you're given too much especially as play as a player like if you're given too much freedom you just kind of get that you kind of freeze up because there's so many options you want to do stuff but i don't, I don't think he does i think it, it's it, it's helpful railroading i think if it is you want to call it that there's times where he does things that kind of set off if he's railroading he's very, typically very subtle about it Mm-hmm. Um, I can't, you know, it's funny. I can't think I've, I've had that feeling a few times watching the show, but I can't think of any off the top of my head. I do know the one thing that kind of popped out to me was when they went to the shadow fell, mm-hmm. um, Chris is like, okay, a, a month passes. Yeah. And that was like, you know, what? 
and that immediately brought here that immediately brought me back to in high school i was running a spell jammer campaign mm-hmm. and the group all had their own ships right and this is spell jammer is D in space for people who don't know they've all got their own ships with their crews and they decided mm-hmm. they wanted to spend some th- time just working on their ships painting them uh adding things to it mm-hmm. doing repairs and as a dm i thought it would be cool to say a bunch of time passes right Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, it takes 13 years. <laughs> and everybody like stopped. And yeah. they went, what? <laughs> you know? And so that's kind mm-hmm. of the feeling I got when they're going through the Shadowfell and it takes a month. It's like, you know, like mm-hmm. record scratch noise. You know what I mean? Like, like oh. what? You know, why is yeah. that happening? You know what I mean? Oh, hi, Anna. How are you? Oh, sure. <laughs> Chris Perkins is a sneaky man, says Anna. Yes. Mm-hmm. Is he sneaky? Well, he's not that. Is he sneaky? Kind of, yes, yes. Considering with the he he hides things, kind of like in plain sight a lot of times, or it distracts, like the rings and with the uh, the map or not the map situation they have that they're in now. It's like there's this, right there's there's a city that you didn't visit. Right. You, uh, I I I I had I couldn't remember the places they were supposed to go, but it was because Orlunga. Uh uh-huh. Omu, and then Nangalore, right? And uh, they didn't go to Nangalore at all, did they? No, they didn't. It was interesting because Chris gave an idea initially because in the um, the recap, he did say mention that there was that noble looking for the map. Mm-hmm. And he knew probably fairly well that they did not visit that other city. <laughs> did that come or, ever come up while they were in the jungle? Did they ever discuss going to Nangalore? Or was it something where Larry Dashlin mentioned it and they didn't? It really never came up again. It think? never came up because it's also it's something that was in the wiki also. Like Nangler was mentioned as one thing that they had to visit and they just didn't get there. Hmm. Nangalore is a cool place. It's right out of the mm-hmm. book, so it's yep. kind of too bad they didn't go there because it's one of the cooler. I think that's the, it's like a cool location. So it's kind of, now it's kind of like, are they going to go back out there? check it out or i don't think so i don't think they want to go i think maybe they'll try and negotiate (laughs) partial payment Mm -hmm. maybe just to get back home but i don't think they want to go i don't think they want to go back out there they seem to have a bad time i mean and they want to get out of port nine zaru because of the the zenter and um, of course i'm i'm jumping ahead but Mm -hmm. um scotty mentioned speaking of sneaking things remember the triceratops token Oh yes. Well, that, I don't know what that was. Is spoiler that alert, can... everybody! Uh, do you want to do the spoiler hand signal? Yeah, I'll do spoiler sign. <laughs> All right, spoiler sign. Hands will go down once. Okay, once... it's from the adventure. Ready? I um, something better. That's the <laughs> Etepka Society, a secret society that lives in Port Nye and Zaru. They're kind of like the secret protectors, and when they want to talk to you or warn you about something, they drop that token on your doorstep, and that's like a, a warning. So. That's all. That's all I'll say. It's spoiler over. Anna asked a question. I have a question. Do you still hate the Evelyn ship as much as you once did? Hate it? Okay. As much as you once did. And with that in mind, what did you think of them being reunited this episode? Uh, I hate the Evelyn ship. I just personally felt it wasn't viable because Paulton wasn't giving anything to- it was all one-sided it was all evil mm-hmm. and none of it was paulton so it felt like there was no ship to set sail you know what i mean mm-hmm. um h- how did you feel about what what happened in this episode she came back to life how did you feel shauna yeah i think I, as far as the paulton thing mm-hmm. i think paulton's after the the whole ring thing the whole ring experience i think is more willing to open up it's it's slowly happening like he's he's at least being receptive in some way he's not he's not making a uh, he's not making a fourth wall joke and he's kind of like not downplaying it he's just kind of like being very careful with it which indicates that he does does care about evelyn a lot like a lot which is which is interesting to see um so i i how did i feel about this uh he came back um he's again 
But, you know, part of it is just, okay. <clears throat> I don't know how to put this, but. <laughs> some mm, Part of this is acting and what you're comfortable doing at the table. And it could be that Nate just isn't sure how to run that or his take it seems actually it seems like his take on this is he's thinking very long term mm -hmm. and, but he's not he's, he's not leaving like a trail of breadcrumbs it's kind of like yeah, there's not oh you know maybe later maybe later maybe later you know like end of show end of end of series you know <laughs> but um as as a fan for me it comes off like she's wasting her time that's how I feel. What's what's the what's the appeal of you know what I mean of Paulton? He's a he's a drunk guy who doesn't seem to really care. Although that's changed a bit. Uh, you know, all, all he really cares about is, is Simon, and Simon is an evil entity that immediately tried to kill the person who brought him back to life. You know, he's chaotic neutral. Evelyn is good. Evelyn mm -hmm. worships. The sun, you know, Lathander, the Morning Lord, all things good. Paulton is not good. He Paulton is dark, you know, and Paulton doesn't care. Paulton is like walking apathy, you know. That's kind of the character, and it's like she's trying. It's 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 like mm -hmm. he could change, right? He could change, but it's mm -hmm. been a long time, and to me, it feels like Evelyn. Just move on, you know. You know what's funny? Here's mm. the funny thing: if Evelyn stopped showing interest, I kind of wonder if suddenly Paulton would start, you know, coming like he would get like weirded out, you know. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> so it's well, kind of I, funny how that might work work out. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I mean, Paulton's kind of like hasn't voiced, you know, very much about his feelings about any of the Waffle Crew until mm -hmm. like. Even, like, halfway through the season, through, like, mm -hmm. the Tortle episode. So, I mean, I think it's going to take a while for, for him. Mm -hmm. But this episode, he... This episode and the episode where she actually died, he acted pretty seriously. He hasn't, like, brushed it off. So, I think he's starting to take the relationship with the characters more seriously, I think, than he did before. Ooh, people, people don't like it that I called Simon evil. Simon I mean, isn't evil. He reacted to a stranger. He only fired one. <laughs> evil would have been jumping on Omen's face and attempting to climb down his throat, thus controlling AI oh, from boy. the inside. Oh boy! No, Simon is evil. He tried to. He just tries to kill people, just like that. He darts. He's, he darts. Simon is freaking evil. Um, I mean, I, I like, and I was, I, I guess Simon can't talk now. Is that right? Yeah, I think he can't talk. I think he's back to. It's my his mouth basically shooting darts out. I liked I liked it when he talked. Uh, it's very disappointing. Uh, that oh, so they res so they resurrected him with <laughs> full poison darts already installed. So that's <laughs> Lisa, I know, right? I'm making people mad. I, I I gotta. I'm just I'm speaking from the heart, Simon. If if I was a player, let me ask you people. Okay, people in the chat, let me ask you this: If you were playing in the game and you had this NPC with you that is shooting darts. At you during a combat, like to either put you to sleep or to kill you, would you want that NPC in your party? That's that's what I would I would like to know because it's like when you're watching the show, it's amusing, um, but it's also like why would you keep, like if you were playing the game, like I, I my character could die at any time. Would you bring this thing with you? I wouldn't. Or or. I would do something horrible, like sew its mouth shut, you know, I mean, you know, cause I'm, or get rid of his darts, just, just get out, you know, give him some kind of goofy dart, like a fun mm -hmm. dart, or a healing dart, or something like that, you know what I mean? What, is that the first time that Simon's darted someone since, um, Barovia? Or has he done that before? Oh uh, yeah, in Barovia, remember he was freaking darting Tatiana. But he's, I mean, he's darted, <laughs> I mean, he's, he's done less... He's darting yeah. Tatiana, who's the the like the core of the whole Ravenloft setting, but, and they want to keep her alive, and he just randomly starts trying to kill her. But the thing is, you can't. This one hasn't killed though. This this Paul. I mean, this Simon hasn't killed. This isn't the same one that killed the child with the dart. Right. 
the, so yeah, that's right. Because there was the original, there mm-hmm. was Simon, and they went back in time and got young, fresh mm-hmm. Simon. But the young, fresh Simon starts trying to kill Tatiana. But, but he's been, he's Simon been good. keeps with them, and then mm-hmm. gets destroyed by the Balanoth, and he's brought back mm-hmm. to life. And boom, he's 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 darting. Uh, all right, I want to see what people have to say about my <laughs> proposal. <laughs> Depends on how that came about. If I say I did something bad towards him, then yeah, I des- I deserve it. Really? No way. Uh, would depend on my character. Okay, that's fair. As the DM, sure. Right, yeah, the, Simon's a fun tool for the DM, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Simon has been very useful at times. He doesn't tend to fire the darts randomly anymore. Uh, not personally, but he has warmed up to the party and worked with them. It's true. Healing dart equals paladin Simon. You, you, we're on the same wavelength, Swan Dive. Uh, I always also wonder if he only shot the dart because he was trying to talk. That's a good point. That's, That's a very good, good yeah, point, Burnt Norris. Just... That makes a lot of sense. Like he thought I guess... he could talk, and he opened his mouth, and the dart came out. Yeah, because it was just like it was a immediate resurrection thing. Was possibly an instinctual thing to to dart at that point. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, and he was probably freaked out because he was dead. Yeah. We still don't know where he went when he died. Yeah. Right. Uh, Azra would incinerate Simon with a fireball. Oh, okay. Well, uh, lay on dart. Yes. Scotty, I agree with you. Just because he's evil doesn't mean he can't have preferences for people. He chooses to not shoot darts at Paulton and his friends, but that doesn't make him good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as someone who had to try and convince their in-game girlfriend that a hellhound is not a pet, I sympathize. <laughs> well... As a DM, I don't know about you, but like, uh, in my game, I hellhounds are nice. They're just dog. They're like nice dogs, like mm-hmm. everybody else. So, <laughs> my, in the... I just did it. I know, I know. We're talking about, but uh, in my game, like the bad guys are kind of nice. Like I, I don't do real torture in the game. So like last night, I actually ran Planescape, and so they went to Shemeshka's torture room, and she just tickles people until they say stop, and then she just stops. Like, that's that's torture in my game. So I guess it all depends on the DM style. Does mm-hmm. Omen still have the two rings, by the way? I missed if he gave those back. Did he keep those two rings? Do you remember? I don't know. Yeah. I don't see a reason why he would keep those. I think maybe... I think he probably gave them back, I think. I would assume he gave them back. Uh, yeah. The, these, are the, these are the rings people are talking about. Um, I, you know, this is... Again, my, my attention span is so terrible. There's two rings that the group was passing between them for the death curse. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I kept getting mixed up on oh, that. I think I thought there was only one for a long time. Uh, but there's two rings. So because three people had the death curse, so two people would wear a ring, and one just mm-hmm. had to suffer for that night. So you no, know, it's weird. Okay, so they're rings of protection, right? Um, and they still do they still have pieces of evil and soul in them? That's a good question. Hmm. Yeah. I guess if we figure out where the, if if they still have them, that would be something to look into. I guess because um, a piece of Diath's soul is owned by Shemeshka, right? Mm-hmm. So now, two pieces of Evil and Soul are owned by the heroes, the other heroes in the group. That mm-hmm. could become a thing at some point. You know, it's weird. They could, in theory, trade a piece of Evil and Soul to somebody for something. And it's already been established that her soul is of great value because her soul went into the Soulmonger and freaking destroyed it. Yes. Right? So her mm-hmm. soul might be a special... You know, DS got the ancient soul, right? Yeah. And his soul has some kind of special quality to it. And now Evelyn has a special soul. I kind of wonder... Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of wonder what you can do. You know, like the, I really am interested to find out more about Diaz's ancient soul. Like, what does it, what does it do? Yeah, what's the, what's the purpose of owning a piece of it? What's what do you get out of that? That's kind of what I wonder. Yeah, I wonder if it's like just like leverage, or if it actually has some some sort of use beyond that. Mm. He'll figure that out soon. Yeah, just is it? Yeah, is it just leverage? Is mm-hmm. that is that all it is? From like the uh, the contract thing, but yeah, I guess maybe it could could have some magical use up beyond that. How would you run Shemeshka in a game? I ran her. I was, I was oh. Shauna. How would you do it? Like if you were going to run Shemeshka in a game, I ran her like kind of like how Chris did, but I, I my group got into a situation where they had the, they had one of the books of keeping and they knew her mm-hmm. true name, so she kind of had to grovel before them. 
Would you have mm -hmm. would you have Shemeshka grovel? I did not. I I think when I ran her, I think I ran her too too creepy and scary because like my, my PCs refused to deal with her, even though she wasn't. She was proposing something that would have like benefited them. But yeah, she's that she's tough to run. I think I think she's it's a it's like it's something you want to be able to have them in a position to deal, but also have them deal with it. So. What I did was, I don't want to get too off topic here, but um, Todd Stewart writes this huge Shemeshka story hour. You can Google it. It's like a freaking mm -hmm. novel he's been writing for 10 years, and you can read the whole thing online. So when I was getting ready to run Shemeshka, I went through that, and I read some of the scenes he, he used Shemeshka in, and I just kind of took notes and based mm -hmm. my Shemeshka off of that. And she does grovel. She does have a master that threatens mm -hmm. her, and she freaks out. So I was it was very interesting to see because I I think Chris running Shemeshka I don't know if he would have her ever grovel do you I don't know I yeah because I think maybe I think if they were to uh, get further along in um trying to get DSL back it could be I think I think there's still that option there's a slight bit of like humor to, there's a lot of humor to the way Chris runs Shemeshka. So I can definitely see that happening if it was the right circumstance and would still be in character. I have a real beef with evil schemers. Um, I don't know. It's, I don't. It's... I don't like. I don't like manipulative people in real life. Mm. So in the game, I really hesitate to glorify that behavior in any way. You know what I mean? So Shimeshka's yeah. tricky to run. Yeah, okay. I I like them. I think those are my favorite villains, but they're, it's hard to run that. Because it requires a lot of like forethought, a lot more planning than just sending like a brute out there to um, fight your party. Okay, Jared GF Omen ran off with the rings. He's saying. Okay. And I Matt mean, Fartigan says it was hinted that he kept them. I mean, he has. I wouldn't put me on. He did do the switch on the um, infernal contract, so. And you know, so if he has pieces of her soul, maybe he could use that to summon her. Mm -hmm. Acquisitions Inc. show. He, Maybe that's he, why. He's, hit, he's definitely said that he wants the Waffle Crew to do jobs for him. So, do missions for them. So, any leverage. Time Patches says, yeah, Chris had him take him. I mm -hmm. don't know what Jerry's actual intent was. Interesting. I thought he said that Omen packed them up with all of his things. I mean. Oh, okay. And Giovanni Cam also says he kept them. Okay. <laughs> all right. It sounds like he kept them. Uh, Paul is evil in Chris was like, you don't know whether they were consumed during the ritual or not. Okay. I assume it gives Chris a lot of wiggle rooms. He kind of like one of those things where he can bring that up when he wants to because it was glossed over or over the joy of having evil in back. So whatever he wants to do, he can kind of do because no one pressed him further on it. No one asked for the rings back. Mm. Uh, ID buddy, I thought specifically that the rings got endowed by the blessing of Markovia that Evelyn had, and that's why it burned her out. Not sure about that. Mm. Uh, time patches, in my opinion, the lost part of DS soul is the Azamar part of him. Mm. What do you think? That's, that's a good idea. Yeah. I mean, we don't know what exactly um, the um, that soul was to begin with, as like Azamar or not. So you just need to figure out what that is. Like, there's been a lot of Lord, stuff said about Lorkatha, but we don't actually know that much about it. Or then they had, you know, they were the and the angelic version of like Tieflings, Asmar, or it could be something else. We don't know. Chris could do something. <laughs> uh, sh boy, everybody's used Shemeshka. This is interesting. Mm -hmm. So it sounds oh, like people cool. watch Dice Camera Action, and then they, or maybe they've just used her before this. Sh that. People like Shemeshka, and they're using her in their games, which is pretty, pretty cool. She's pretty prominent in like the um, the source books and stuff like that. Like yeah. she's one of the more prominent like NPCs that isn't a um, faction like factal. Mm -hmm. I want I want to see if anybody else has had the Waffle Crew show up in their game. I've because I, I've done that a couple times. I've done that. I get a kick. Okay. You, you have really? I've used Strix as a tout in uh, for for like my uh my players like to to like give them a tour around sigil and stuff like that so <laughs> i've used it a little bit did they know who she was did they watch the show no 
So what was their reaction to her? They liked her. They're wondering why I just thought we didn't take her along. It's like she's, oh. she's got she's got something else to do. Oh, that's fair. That's pretty freaking cool. All right. Uh, all right. Shimeshka in my game was wow. Look at this. Shimeshka yeah. was a patron for a warlock NPC, which is a freaking awesome idea. Mm. Um. If the party had her true name, I would make her grovel. Well, that's that's what happened in my game actually last night. I feel that she wouldn't grovel, but that's just me, Jared. Yeah, I, I Jared, uh, well, I I agree with you, uh, but I read Todd to me. Todd Stewart is the authority on Shemeshka, so like I, mm -hmm. I figured if I read him, I could use his portrayal of her as a guideline to you know to to run her. So uh, I was very interested because it does it does seem fun to run her as when it comes down to it, a coward. Like a sibling mm -hmm. coward who is so yeah. selfish that she's, you know. Plus, players always like to see someone get their comeuppance, you know. So you have your bad guy do some horrible things. You mm -hmm. make the characters want to get revenge on them. And then you give them the revenge and you make it as, you know, juicy as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, like in wrestling where Ric Flair gets beat up and he begs you not to hit him again, you know. And yeah. He, oh, and he flops around and everybody laughs, you know. And that's, people really like that kind of simple dynamic you know yeah because i mean that's that's payoff for like that mastermind type of villain is like when they're on equal footing it's it's not they tend they, they have a tendency to be like cowardly at certain points so mm -hmm. it's it's good it's good to do that swan dive i dm for group uh, three-fourths of them watch dca so of course i included shimeshka <laughs> they also found diaz lost dagger oh cool that's funny <laughs> <laughs> um so let's see here they brought Evelyn back to life. That's where mm -hmm. we, we had stopped. And yep. um, Evelyn came back, and she's flesh and blood. And mm -hmm. it, I'm glad she's flesh and blood now. You, mm -hmm. you, do you agree? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 fine. I think it's it gives her another avenue to, like, kind of have some character growth and stuff like that. Have I think having her character kind of, like, having the most, like, outward change from, like, her to being constructive and having her back is is an, is an interesting way of doing that because it can definitely have her like do different things. Like her thing was like before was being kind of like not be able to be able to like emote, you know, like cry and stuff like that. But now she has that back and it's interesting to see where that takes her considering the talk her and her father had in the um, – in the heavens and stuff like that, even though she doesn't necessarily remember that. Why? What do you mean? Like, it was that, it was, there was talk about her basically being with another person isn't being going against Lathander's, like, wishes. It's like, it, she kind of got Lathander's blessing to, like, kind of follow her heart. And I see where that goes. Because yeah, now she's flesh and blood. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like the construct bodies, and I kind of wish there was, like, one super giant construct body. You know, I think that would have been really cool. She'd be, like, stomping through your port night. We did. Our... We had that once. We had that once when they fought the, the T-Rex. It was a, the enlarged mm -hmm. Evelyn. Yeah. But I think she was only 10 feet tall, right? She was 10 feet tall, yeah. Yeah, I want one that's, like, 25 feet tall. Sure. Like, there's, like there's if they say they had to go deal with Mygara. That would be really cool <laughs> if she was in a construct body and like mm -hmm. fought my Gara like Power Rangers or something like that. Yes. You know? Yeah. Um. So yeah, she came back to life, and uh, Paulton. You know, you know the best. I was thinking about this. The best. Mm -hmm. Do you remember a few episodes back where Paulton uh, kind of gave she he she was praying and he gave her mm -hmm. like, a little speech. To me, that was the best. That was the best Paulton uh, moment on the whole show. Mm -hmm. You remember that? I, he yep. he said, and he actually he, he likes to break the fourth wall, you know. So he yeah. says, and uh, he told he told Reddit to relax, and that it's mm -hmm. it's a it's a long term thing. I thought that was the best Paulton thing on the show, and in this case, it was kind of like I don't know. It was all right. I I just um. I just, I, I just, I, I would really like to see, like, Evelyn just, you know, uh, go, <laughs> let's have Drizzt show up, you know, or something. <laughs> you know what? I'm sick of nobody treating Evelyn nicely. 
You yeah. know what I mean? That's um, that's that's what I'm I'm sick of. She's such a good like, character. Like she's who? Doing like good. the crew? Yeah, I mean they're nice to her, but they're not. Mm -hmm. Nobody. She's not fully appreciated. Uh, she's the most powerful fighter. She has a direct moral compass. She yeah. will save them every chance she gets. She heals them. Um, without her, you know they're in. You know, I mean, I, they got Strix, who does a lot of damage. Yeah. But Evelyn uh, is like a real butt kicker. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think they do know. They do know, and they think they do appreciate her. I think they just they have a way. They have a way of like acting with her that, that it's mm -hmm. kind of like the way Strix acts is the mm -hmm. playful teasing, but. Mm -hmm. She does, like, appreciate her, because if she didn't appreciate Evelyn, she wouldn't interact with her at all. She mm -hmm. would just, like, stay aside. But it's very sisterly, and it's very warm, like, the kind of, like, getting close to her to, you know, kind of put the smell, you know, closer her, her smell of the closer to her and stuff like that. It's very, it's it's really cute. And Dieth, Dieth does appreciate it, because he said, he said so before. Dieth does, yeah. Mm -hmm. But the others, uh, not so much. You know, and it's like, I just feel like she doesn't get credit enough, um, or, uh, I just want, I want to see an NPC treat her with, uh, at this, she's a 10th level paladin. She mm -hmm. destroyed the soulmonger. She is a hero. She mm -hmm. saved so many people from the death curse. And yeah. it's kind of like, you know, can I have a medal or, you know what I mean? Like some, can anybody like, thank you? Can somebody say thank you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, although although I think of all the characters, I think NPCs do treat her, like, despite being, you know, the construct or whatever, the mm -hmm. best, because mm -hmm. Strix is kind of like a outward appearance is like, is a garbage pile. Paulton is just like a weird <laughs> drunk, and Diath is like, you over there, hey, hey guy. Like, you know, the way, the way, like, Omen <laughs> treats dude. him. Yeah. yeah. Dorth. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's the most outwardly kind of, like, impressive looking of, mm -hmm. of them. Like, it's she's a gold... You know, holy person at this point. At this, yeah, it's just like they're they're tenth level, they're heroes. They they saved everybody. They destroyed the soulmonger. Most, I mean, she did, but they all went to go do it, and they did it. Mm -hmm. And I, I would like to see them, in some way, be appreciated for that. You know, yeah, I don't, I... I don't want the world to always be like. Who are these schmucks? You know. I think I think they're getting there. I think mm -hmm. I think they're definitely getting there because now people know. Because I mean, they. It's interesting seeing Strix, especially like not in the setting of the Waffle Crew, like when she's on the C team or with um. Aquatine. She there is a certain like level of like. She's powerful. She's a powerful you know person, and it's like mm -hmm. this person has a certain amount of respect. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of interesting contrasting that with then with kind of like the Waffle Crew where they're just kind of like they kind of struggle to like basically survive at certain points. Mm -hmm. Mad Fartigan. He's talking about glorifying manipulative behavior. I get where you're coming from, but I feel you could introduce it as a character trait, but make an example of severe consequences. Also, it can create a sense of sympathy for the players and even create motive for exacting justice. Yeah, I agree. It's a good bad guy. It's just for me... Mm -hmm. It's like a sore spot for me, you know, that's all I just, Yeah. For me, d and is about getting away from, you know, and some, you know. Yeah. I don't want that. I've already, what? Uh, I've had my fill. <laughs> like, what level is too much for you for, like, a PC doing that, like, being that way, like, manipulative? Oof. Gosh, I don't know. My, uh, I wouldn't, I, my characters wouldn't. It depends. Like, it depends on how you play it, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, if there's just a super evil bad guy who's like, like he's running like a D and D North Korea, you know, then do what you got to do to kill, you know. Mm -hmm. But if it's someone for their own gain, then I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put up with that selfishness. That really, you know what I mean? Because, yeah, I'm wondering how that's gonna be for um, Nate's thing. Because that's a game of like evil neutral to evil characters and having mm -hmm. that is like those like those things don't tend to last very long and it's think like how you maintain that level of like maybe not being good by while well, still being a functional party because that's i've i've tried before and it it ends up either kind of like dissolving or everyone kind of becomes good at a certain point mm -hmm. it's it's hard to maintain that kind of level of like neutral to like evil at certain points I, i've never seen a group of evil characters campaign last 
ever. Mm-hmm. I, I'm sure it can be done. Yeah. And I would bet if on that show they might be able to do it. But you kind of mm-hmm. get the feeling they're not going to be that evil. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, I think it's that's especially for like like a um like a public you know like a performed show. It's so I think that's the one of the toughest things you can do is have like an evil party because at a certain point like you don't want people to like root against necessarily root against the characters and you still want them to be like you still want the the audience to kind of like them and stuff like that because that's that's tough yeah being evil if you're evil in a goofy way mm-hmm. then, I, then i think it could work and I, I bet that's how they'll do yeah it. if you're evil in just like a i don't know but they you know it's a show they know they gotta they can't yeah it, it, you know you, can, you can't just you know kill babies or whatever <laughs> that's not i don't think that's gonna be well, who knows? I'm sure they'll make it work. Uh, Dun, Dungeon Run. How far back did Evelyn lose her memory to? I think it was just the time that she was dead, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what did she forget? She just, she met her dad, so she forgot that. Oh, yeah. Her dad told her about his body and under. Yes. So oh, she... yeah. The um, her body, the char, the char, like mm-hmm. cult and stuff like that. Wonder yeah, why she... that. Wonder why he did that. I think also it's something that could dramatically like she could remember at certain point at a point like if she were to be like you know um unconscious from a battle she could like you know remember something like it's something that he could that could like be like gradually given back to her at certain points mm-hmm. uh ooh, people are telling me okay uh all right as far as oh boy i think i'm gonna get it here <clears throat> okay uh the entire waffle crew finds it difficult to express emotion and that mm-hmm. makes me sad since time patches. True? Yeah, I think, yeah, there are a bunch of kind of, like, kind of broken people, I think, that are, you know, they find solace to each other. But, like, Strix and D- Diath have, you know, trouble, you know, expressing themselves to each other. Like, Strix, especially with the others, like, with Evelyn, it took a while, like, um, like from the beginning. Her making fun of Evelyn was mean at first. Like, it was kind of, mm-hmm. like... And it just kind of gradually, like, gradually slowly became friends and stuff like that, where it became more, like, sisterly. So, they do have trouble. Pretzel Mafia says, I think Diaz and Strix appreciate her quite a lot. I mm-hmm. think they do. I just, for me, it's like, I want to see it expressed. I guess that's my my beef. Uh, the original uh, Steve against Prime... They traded a 20,000 gold horn for two 500 gold piece diamonds like it was nothing because it would bring her back. True. Mm-hmm. But yeah. um, they're not very, when it comes to their stuff, they're very, you know, they forget. Well, I mean, they don't use their stuff that much. I mean, remember a few episodes ago, uh, Chris actually went had a little thing in the beginning. It was, like, here's the things you can do. <laughs> and he ran down all the stuff they have, you know. I mean... You run, you run for, for that many things. You forget what stuff you have, even though it could be really like, like I forget, like it's easy to forget what potions you have and what scrolls you have because those aren't like as flashy as like you know, gutter or like the the horn and stuff like that. So it seemed like they implied there were earlier things that Evelyn didn't remember. I don't know. Hmm. It could be. I think uh, time badges. I think that was mostly due to the shadow fell magic making her believe things aren't real, but I'm not sure. Jared. Plus, she wasn't even sure if she was the one who did it, even though we know that she did. Oh, you t- I think he's talking about the uh... pretzel mafia. What about the whole sainthood thing? I think yeah. if they're going mm-hmm. back to Waterdeep, and her family is there, then I think mm-hmm. that's when we'll. Right. Yeah, because okay. that's the important thing. Is like she. She's effectively a saint at this point, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh. Exar, the dino token thing might mm-hmm. signify that the faction recognizing their Evelyn's defeat of the Soulmonger, that's possible. Yeah? Mm. Maybe that's what they wanted. Maybe they left the token they wanted to yeah. meet with them. Uh, I don't know why they wouldn't just just meet with them. Mm-hmm. But maybe that, yeah. that, that's how they do things, and maybe that's what it was. Or maybe it was a warning to them based on the actions of the awful crew. Mm-hmm. True. Uh, time patches functional party, but also entertaining to watch. You still got to be able to identify and empathize with PCs, even if they're evil. Yeah, they're very dysfunctional. The whole party is very dysfunctional. Mm, I mean, that's I think the um, 
the mode I think people are starting to make with like PCs and stuff like that. A lot of people like tend to make messes rather than like having you know the superheroic characters and stuff like which is in, which is fun. It would be pretty boring if they all got along and they were all perfect. Mm-hmm. That'd be annoying yeah. actually, right? Be like yeah, super dudes and super ladies just always. I mean, you know. it gives it gives. A trajectory to like build on and stuff like that. If you start off like at the top, there's not a lot of like you basically just have a fall, and that's sometimes not fun to see. So I like I like especially like making characters kind of start them off at the bottom, so you kind of have a way you know the way to grow with the party and stuff like that, and have a way to go, especially for like long campaigns. Loco makes a this is true. Ask Quentin Tarantino. Even evil characters, well written, can be liked. That's mm-hmm. very true. That's a very good point. Yeah. And they, they could probably pull that off on Dark and Dicey. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Anna, there's so much she forgot. He did that. She, she says Chris had wiped her memory just to mess with her. That's what she says. <laughs> she says, he told me that Evelyn would live about a year apart from her friends. So I spent this whole time thinking how she would develop over a year and what she would wish she had said to her friends. And then she forgot. Mm. <laughs> That's horrible. <Not> <laughs> That's so horrible. Yeah. she says she likes how unmaterialistic the group mm-hmm. is and um yeah well i i got i got behind and i missed a million comments <laughs> um we're almost out of time though uh all right anything else on the show you want to uh pull in the... all right so they brought they brought simon back to life yep and, got dark. um you got darted and they ate some poison food and they realized that the zentrum was trying to kill them because when mm-hmm. they report nine zaru before you know, yes. they they were trying to get the Ring of Winter from the group. They got some enemies. It was this still. crazy battle where DF almost died. So the Zentrum's still trying to whack them. So yeah. the group wants to get out of there. They go find Lyric Dashland. And mm-hmm. he points, you know, because he would have given them a ship in exchange for maps, but they didn't get a map of Mangalore. Yeah. So that's where we stopped. So you, do you think they're going to get a ship? Or do you think... Well, just, how do you think they're going to get out? They could just pay, a, you know, pay, get passage on a ship, right? Mm-hmm. No big deal. Or, I mean, they got <laughs> they could have Shemeshka teleport them. Yeah, <laughs> or Shemeshka's going to want her stuff right away. <laughs> or they activate that portal key right. randomly. Right. Because portal the... keys, sometimes they can activate without you knowing it, right? Just on mm-hmm. when they have, when they hit the, uh, the, um, whatever frame they're on. Mm-hmm. Oh, Exar asks us, hey, Sean and Shauna. Who was drunk? Remember at the beginning of the show, I... Chris said it was, it was, it was Perkins, mm. right? <laughs> yes, it would be. You think? But he was at work. <laughs> what? What do they do in that building? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like the most fun job ever. <laughs> so they announced uh, the stream of many eyes, mm. and I had gotten actually a big email about this. Um, so it's going to be like last year's stream of Annihilation. They're going to it starts uh, June 1st, Friday at 4 p.m. and I guess it's 3 days. And you can actually buy tickets to go watch. Mm. So I was looking at the prices. I mean, I live in New York. It's in LA. Yeah. But the tickets, I mean, the tickets are for one show and it's yeah. 200 bucks. So if mm. you you don't if you buy tickets, you don't get to see all the shows. You see all one days, yeah. one of the shows. So uh I saw there was High Rollers, Dark and Dicey, mm-hmm. um Maze Arcana. I yeah. think, um, and there was some new stuff. There's one, I think, something about Waterdeep. Uh, I don't remember exactly. Rivals of Waterdeep, I think, was, was, was the other one. Yeah. yeah. And Deborah Ann Wall from Daredevil is going to be running a game, I think. Mm-hmm. And then Force Grey is going to be doing a thing. Yeah. And I think on Sunday is the day the Dice Camera Action. And they said for the Dice Camera Action one, for the first time ever, it's going to be all for people. Yes. Because Nate will yes. be there for Dark and Dicey anyway. Because that was, that was really supposed to happen for... Um, unplugged but yeah they got delayed yeah. so i would say like if you can do it and you have to think it's a lot of fun to watch them live it's it's it was great mm-hmm. so i hope if somebody lives near la and you go mm-hmm. pff, let me know give me give me the scoops so what it was like i i was kind of toying with the idea of going but i mean that's a lot of money so, I mean, so it's a lot of travel. For me, I have to fly yeah. all the way across the country. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do yeah, that. Yeah, because LA is not and a cheap it, city. Plus, right. Plus, I'm like last year for the stream of Annihilation, I wrote 
I recapped every show. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. I'm going to do it again this year on my blog. Yeah. So, you know, I'll probably, I'll be for that whole weekend. I'm going to be just like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Watching every show, which actually is fun. I actually like it. It's fun. It's fun because you get to see a bunch of them in, in rapid succession, like ones that you can't watch because of timing. You can kind of get a, get a taste. And they had like a lot of really cool one-offs too that happened at the stream last year. So I'm hoping they do that again. Like the, the one shot grungs with like all the DMs and stuff like that. It was great. And, um, okay, so they did say on Friday, they're pretty much the show's going to – actually, Anna's going to be hosting this. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they're going to have a roundtable of people who work at Wizards, and they're going to be discussing what the new storyline is about. Yes. So the only clues we have right now is Stream of Many Eyes. Many Eyes, yes. Which sounds like a Beholder thing, right? Yeah, I mean, there's been things about, like – Morse code in the in the title and so on. so there's been like a lot of like teasing and I'm not I, I, I have no idea what it what it still is like they've teased so much stuff <laughs> I mean okay so I would think that the thing the only the only thing that comes to mind is uh the Xanathar right I mean if they're going to water deep he's the beholder underneath and mm -hmm. they're gonna do a thing many eyes I can't think of anything else that it could be besides a beholder so I don't know yeah can't think of anything, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, something else. Oh, Birdcage. You wanted to say, talk about yeah, Birdcage like, real quick. Yeah, if um anyone that wants them, there was a slight DCA crossover with uh, Birdcage a couple weeks back where um the group actually we found out when Birdcage is in the the timeline because they visited Strix. What was it? Um, the bakery where she she worked as a child. Like uh, what was it? Um. Idris, it, uh, Idris, the um, the briar and stuff like that. So they um, they actually had to go um, ask Strix for information about um, some stuff that was happening in the um, what was it in the shoot my brain my brain just like locked up. What's the the bad place in in Sigil? The hive. The hive. Yes, mm -hmm. the hive. The hive. And actually, one of the characters, um, the reader, gave Strix a map part of my map to um kind of like communicate back and forth and they actually yeah they actually um told um one of them Nejima, I think, uh showed Strix magic and kind of like got her like excited about like magic for the first time and stuff like that it was really cute but hmm. yeah Strix might have that map still I don't know hmm. and it is like 20 years so mm -hmm. I gotta get there, caught up on that. There is the possibility if those characters were to be like alive twenty years later that those some of those characters might could show up someday. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that would be kind of cool. That would be awesome. I definitely yeah. I like that whole group is awesome. Yeah, it's a really good show. I, I gotta totally yeah. get caught up on it. Awesome. Uh, a bunch of people are saying the same thing that it's a beholder. It's a beholder based season. So I guess we'll see. I'll see. Yeah. Uh, was there anything else? Oh, I wanted to talk real quick about. Um, the dice camera action wiki. Mm -hmm. uh, so right right after we're done with this, I'm going to post my recap on my blog, and then I'm going to post episode 91 entry on the wiki. I was actually doing some wiki stuff while I was watching the show. Yeah, to make as the changes mm -hmm. happen, I would just change it in there. And um, but yeah, I want to thank everybody. A bunch of people have jumped in and fixed it up like I hoped they would because you know some stuff I just missed. So they went in there and they they made all the fixes for me already. So uh, the good. wiki's looking really good, so yeah. uh, I'm just, thank you it's, everybody for uh, jumping in there. And... It's actually super useful to do this with it because it's like I can just find some, like do a little bit of quick research very fast without having to just do a heck of a lot of like just scrambling for information on there. It's mm. been nice. For me, it's especially useful when I'm trying to wrap my head around the whole Skizik thing and all that mm -hmm. stuff and the gutter stuff, which is my favorite part of the show, probably. Um, mm -hmm. So I really like to kind of go over that and get it all organized and see if I can figure out the whole big picture. I mm -hmm. can't, but I like to try. Yeah. <laughs> but it's all right. cool. So uh, you got any plugs, Sean, before we wrap? And, and thank you, everybody in the chat who's been... Uh... Uh, oh, wait. Eggs are... Do you think he wanted to ask... Real quick, do you guys think Paulton's long game playing will extend to him eventually bringing up the voice slash rival in his head that hasn't been episode? Yeah, I remember that in the. In, I don't think so because I think 
it's it, it's maybe like one of those things that you bring to the table like when you first play and as you go you kind of adjust that adjust it mm-hmm. and drop can kind of drop things you know that fit or don't fit because mm-hmm. your initial idea for your character doesn't necessarily survive like sessions with the rest of the party necessarily chris is really clever i bet mm-hmm. in some way he'll he'll wrap that into everything he could. even if it's in some small way like but now he has a rival now now he has a real rival he's got evil paulton now <laughs> yeah exactly maybe maybe evil paulton will have the crazy voice in, in his head mm-hmm. that would be pretty cool <laughs> so sean you got any plugs before we wrap um, it up yeah um other than this and the occasional like what we wrapped up the Tomb of Annihilation for your campaign, so we're figure out where we're doing with that. But on um, Wednesday, but tomorrow, Wednesdays on um, Encounter, um, Encounter uh, Role Plays thing, I'm doing a uh, Star Wars game, mm. and that's um, set at 7 p.m. So that's exciting. I love Star Wars. So what day is that? Wednesday. Wednesday at 7 p.m. Okay. Mm-hmm. And Star Wars, awesome. Yes. Wow. Who's running it? It's um Strider. He's, Strider. Um, he's run the um I love the that guy. here. Yeah. yeah. It's it's cool. He's funny. I like that guy. Mm-hmm. Uh all right. Exciting. So uh tomorrow at two PM Eastern I'm gonna be on um the Greyhawk channel. Jeez, mm. people, you should check out the Greyhawk channel. Yes. Not because I'm on it, but <laughs> all all, but but because he's just does an incredible job running games. He like it's very, very professional. Uh, there's music, there's maps. It's amazing, all the stuff he does at once. And on top of that, he's a very good DM. He's a good DM in a I'm on a stream way where he does the voices. He's very clear. He paints the picture really nicely. Uh, and he gives us room to role play, something I'm horrible at as a DM. And, um, and it, like, our last episode was like, it was like, it was like we had some dice camera action moments. Mm-hmm. It was really something I've never really done in D&D before, where I, mm-hmm. uh, my character's like a jerk, a get, get, <laughs> a get, the, a get Zerai monk, and um, I've been, my character hates this other character in the group, and we sort of made friends, and it was like a, a thing. It was like a real thing. It was very cool. It was, it was really cool. So I'm going to do that, and um, this will replay on the D&D channel on Thursday. Now, mm-hmm. Saturday! Okay, so uh, for people who've been watching my shows, you know this I ran the final battle of the Tomb of Annihilation. Yes. Uh, last oh, they Saturday. did so good. They did and so good. I and they they did it. They got through it. They li- I mean, two people died, maybe three out of the four, but they were I mean, able to get brought back. You know, and uh, it was it was really cool. It was really epic. And so uh, all that's left to do is just a few. There's a few rooms after the final room, which is fun. But what happened was the other day, I have a friend who works in a game store, and she sent me. Uh, the Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes promo adventure. It's called Rachma, and it involves Gith Yankee. Ooh. So I am running that this Saturday. I haven't figured out with who or how, but that's going to happen this Saturday, in, probably Sweet. in addition to the tomb. So uh, definitely check that out on my on this channel, Power Score. Is that a uh, is that a high level or low level? It's level account? nine, which is oh, perfect rad. for the tomb characters. So uh, rad. I'm going to run that thing right away. It's written by Chris Lindsay. Who mm. ran the who wrote the last promo adventure for Xanathar's, which was really good. Under that was excellent. I love that one. That it was, was a so really good. fun show that I did, and uh, people, it's, it's it was just really good. So I'm very excited to run this one because for what I don't want to spoil too much about this adventure, but you go to a bunch of different planes. Uh, I think you go to <laughs> Pandemonium. I think you go to the Astral Plane. A whole bunch of stuff like that. So uh, I'm going to start running that this this Saturday. So uh, awesome. thank you everybody for watching. Uh, Sean, any thank final you. final notes? <laughs> Oh, that's it. This is um, it's exciting to see where um, where they go next. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if they're going to go to Sigil at mm-hmm. some point. <laughs> they got the keys. Again, no, still no idea what's going to happen next time. No, you never know, right? No hint, no hint from the from the intro this time either. <laughs> no, not at all. All right, thank you. Thanks for everybody for watching and uh, making all those great comments. And uh, we'll see you again next week. Yes, thanks. Thank you. Right, bye.